Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Dominic. Let me Thank share you. the screen. I hope the screen is visible and uh, now yes, it is yes. in full, full screen. No, yeah. sir. Uh, now it's full screen. Yeah. Thank yes, you. Sir. Go ahead, sir. So, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Dominic, uh, for the good introduction. As usual, we have uh, more than 200 participants uh, today as well. I think it is crossing, it, it keep on increasing 215, 216. Okay. Now, uh, uh, as you said, uh, actually, I reached uh, Chennai yesterday night. Yesterday, we had a nice uh, seminar, electrical safety seminar in Nagpur, organized by the Institute of Engineers. There were, I think, about four, more than 140 participants were there. So I reached midnight, and today, after immediately after this program, I have to leave uh, to Philippines. So there is an IEC working group meeting uh, from tomorrow on. Anyway, within this, so I will try to finish at quick as possible because uh, of the time constraint. Let me switch off the camera. Today we are going to discuss about uh, solar PV. As uh, uh, you are aware, this subject has been demanded by our participants for several occasions, but we were trying to skip uh, uh, because of the importance of the other subject. But anyway, today we are back with uh, uh, safety, earthing and lightning protection of uh, solar PV. Uh, my experience with the solar PV, uh, we started making solar combiner boxes during 2002. At that time, nobody knows solar PV or solar PV was very, very limited. Uh, the market was opened up only after 2012 or 2013. We were making combiner boxes until 2012, but after 2012-13, we stopped, uh, reduced making solar combiner boxes and we after 2015, we in fact stopped making solar combiner boxes uh, due to some technical as well as commercial reasons. Anyway, today's program has nothing to do with our business. We are going to discuss about uh, what is the written in the standards about uh, safety and uh, uh, how to implement or how to follow this particular uh, requirement. We will be discussing about uh, uh, the standards 62584, uh, design requirements uh, 63112, which is about earth fault protection uh, in solar with respect to safety and functionality. Uh, then uh, 6036 which is talking about low voltage electrical installation, particularly solar PV installation. Then, you know, related uh, standards, and the last one is uh, the earthing and lightning protection of solar PV installation. Just as an introduction, uh, you know very well that uh, uh, the uh, solar PV, for example, the for the, 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 the engineer, the participants who are not uh, familiar with uh, solar PV, some of the terms which is used are sometimes it is called as array circuit, PV array, photovoltaic array, array circuit, application circuit. Sometime uh, in the circuit, the uh, one moment. Yeah, sometimes uh, the solar PV is also used with uh, batteries, uh, often without batteries. There are different uh, combinations. The names uh, uh, you can see here, sometimes PV array circuit, DC bus circuit, battery circuit. Uh, these are some of the technical words explained in the standard. Sometimes once when we go deeper into the subject, uh, it is important to understand and keep these wordings in mind. Otherwise, sometimes if we if I explain a DC circuit and uh, if you try to think uh, uh, it in a different way, it would becomes very difficult. So PV uh, array it consists of a PV module, sometimes series combinations of PV module in order to attain certain operating voltage for the purpose of reducing the current. Then the PV string cables are there. Uh, uh, there are OCPDs, overcurrent protective devices, isolators, and power conversion equipment. In the presentation, I will be using the name PCE, power conversion equipment, which is nothing but anything, any electronic object which is uh, accepting the DC and converting it into a DC or AC uh, uh, voltage. So here, one important subject which we should understand is the Nowadays, the solar PV is DC side, is operating with uh, voltages up to 
the allowed voltage is 1500 volt dc but uh, for residential purpose anything above roof rooftop maximum allowed is 1000 volt dc if uh, a rooftop installation is uh, operating with higher than 1000 volt dc then of course uh, the location must be limited to experts or location must be limited to technicians normal people shall not go to those uh, areas now again some more explanations uh, pv modules are connected in series pv strings are made then combiner boxes are there these boxes are collecting the energy uh, which will normally contains uh, fuses uh, spds isolators and so on finally they are connected to uh, the power conversion equipment, some of the uh, definitions also you can see here, PV overcurrent protection, PV string disconnector, all these are sometimes, you know, it is written as if applicable. So it's very interesting to note that these are if applicable, I will uh, explain it later. Let me skip some of these configurations, not very important for today's uh, program. <coughs> This, uh, what you are seeing in the picture is a multiple parallel string uh, with uh, divided into subarrays. Each array is divided into subarrays. You can see these pictures again in the standards, uh, whatever I have uh, mentioned. Oh, I have so many pictures, one moment. Yeah, the first part with respect to safety is a rooftop system. Uh, maximum voltage allowed is 1000 volt DC. If uh, more than 1000 volt DC is used, the, the access must be restricted to competent persons only. That means only the, the technicians only should go to that particular area. Uh, there are uh, buildings nowadays with uh, 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 more than 1000 volt DC, but the most of the time these are uh, rooftop uh, in large industrial areas, but the industrial area rooftop only the technicians are going, technicians with the proper PPE. Now, one important subject which we, or very, very important subject uh, which we have to understand is most of the time, solar PV is installed based on the guidelines produced by sometimes the utilities, sometimes some agencies, sometimes the state uh, agencies are there, uh, sometimes central government agencies. Those guidelines are also often followed uh, along with the standard. The state utilities are some of the state utilities. The guidelines are often asking for some requirement which is not at all included in the standard, or some let me say wrong methods are being uh, propagated or are being requested for in the state uh, utility or sometime in the central utility specification. So, the idea of this program is also to inform you that uh, please follow the standards. Uh, Solar PV, more than shock protection, fire is a big issue. A lot of places, uh, fire accidents are happening. So we have to be very careful. People may think that, okay, rooftop, some fire, nothing happens to the building. It is not like that. Sometimes the inverter which is inside uh, a building also can catch fire. So utilities and agencies involved make their own technical requirement. Often the requirements uh, ask for a kind of air thing. I'm not uh, trying to cover the other subjects. Uh, I'm trying to focus on earth fault protection or protection against fire during earth fault. So in a lot of cases, the two earth pits are used for DC side, two earth pits for AC side or inverter is requested, separate lightning protection is requested, sometimes chemical earths are requested. Normally, these requirements from some of the agents, I'm not saying all the agents, some of the agents actually are messing up the technical requirements. Because of this mess up, a lot of safety hazards are uh, happening within uh, the country. So please note that these requirements are not at all included. Another issue which we uh, see, especially in all solar systems are lightning protection, early streamer emission devices are used. The claim is one device protect up to 100 meters. Please note that this claim is never accepted in the Indian standard or in the IEC standard. So, this uh, EAC rods are just for namesake. It won't uh, protect your installation. Just if somebody asks uh, where is your lightning protection, you can show them, yes, I have a rod, that is my EAC rod. For namesake, 
you can keep it otherwise uh, don't expect any safety from uh, these rods no? for example people claim that uh, efc rods are as per the french standard since i spoke about the efc standard i should also show this uh, the french standard is asking a perfect equipotential bonding not only the efc rod equipotential bonding whereas in our case in india we use only the efc rod uh, and the rest of the items specified in the standards are not carried out so please be sure that the efc we are not going to talk the next important subject which you should always keep in mind is uh, protective devices which is working in an ac environment may not work in a dc environment and most often are may not available for example ocpd overcurrent protective devices are not effective for quick disconnection of shock in an ac circuit in a normal electrical installation the against pro, against the safety against the electric shock or fault protection the concept of uh, protective equipotential bonding and automatic disconnection of supply is the primary safety measure whereas this method will not work out in solar pv because for enabling automatic disconnection you need to have some protective device which is able to operate within certain time and that kind of operation a device which is able to operate within that time let's say for example 0.1 second or 0.2 second may not be possible ocpds are not effective for quick disconnection shock protection due to lower current during uh, 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 disconnection so, so shock protection by disconnection by ocpd is not possible rcd for dc duty is yet to be available in the market rcd for dc duty dc duty means for pure dc application of course rcd is type b or type b plus rcds are available please note that these are ac duty rcd ac duty in the sense the application is ac but with a dc leakage these are not for dc pure dc duty dc duty uh, rcd is little bit different than ac duty rcd because uh, in dc for example uh, the making and breaking shall happen in uh, dc current breaking and dc current is uh, different than making a uh, breaking an ac current so dc duty rcd is until now is uh, uh, at least i don't know i am trying to find out uh, a dc duty rcd which is of course i could not found out from the market the standards are already in place 2017 there is an ic standard published for dc duty rcd but uh, uh, with a lot of uh, additional testing but so far i think that kind of product is not available in the market the third point is arc flash detection device especially for series arc arc fault arc afdds are not available for dc application so with the, the limitation of uh, the protective devices a totally different concept has been included in this standard so the general concept which is followed for an ac application please don't try to apply it in a solar pv because uh, for example the short circuit current is quite less the operation time of the protective devices will be quite high so the normal concepts will not work with respect to air thing i'm just showing a picture consisting of a pv generator and an inverter say for example the positive and negative lines are connected pv spd the frame of the pv generator is connected to a common bus bar of course there is an spd as well then from the common bus bar let me complete it okay sub met sub met closer to the frame that in simple if we say the frame of the pv solar is connected to a bus bar which is in turn connected to a sub bus bar meant for the equipotential bonding of the solar pv inverter as shown in the picture where i am moving the cursor then from the sub met the connection shall come to the main equipotential earth bus bar of the building where you have uh, let us say this is applicable for uh, a rooftop installation you have the kilowatt hour meter or the mains incoming near to the mains incoming you have the met from the met the protective conductor shall be extended 
to the inverter further it has to be extended to the frame of the solar pv installation this is how it has to be made the earthing of solar pv installation shall be made people will ask then what do we do with the positive and negative shall we earth it or not never you are never allowed to earth uh, uh, the positive or negative of course that particular earthing is made inside the inverter and that is the decision of the inverter manufacturer if the inverter manufacturer recommend a positive or negative earthing this is very much written in their manual you have to read the manual and you have to decide whether the dc side to be earthed or not otherwise dc neither positive or negative shall be earthed it has to be a double insulated installation which we will discuss later so now this is a typical uh, uh, earthing layout of uh, a rooftop solar pv now please note that the met is connected to here on the cursor i am moving uh, the symbol 5018 for 5017 for example but this is actually a functional bonding means uh, to the frame or chassis of uh, your building the MET is also connected to the lightning protection system, also to the extraneous conductive part, which we always discuss in our uh, uh, seminars. Now, see, for example, this particular network is applicable for a TNCS uh, network. Most of the standards, if you look, uh, even the including the Indian standards, you will be able to see this picture because the standards and regulations are made thinking that uh, TNCS is followed by the utility. But in practical, TNCS is not followed by the utility company. As a result, uh, we have to make a small change here. This is the connection diagram for TT system. In a TT system, this the green, all the green wires, all these green connections, that means the protective earth connections, protect, protective or functional earth connections are electrically separated from the source earthing see on the left side this is the source earthing the consumer premise the earthing is completely uh, separated first is the user or the the company who is giving the uh, solar pv connection or the, the contractor they have to understand the type of uh, electricity supply from the electricity company and they have to select the appropriate uh, uh, earthing method in the difference between TT and TNR for example in a TNCS network the incoming PEN is connected to the earth bus bar of the installation so there is a metallic fault return path to the source to the neutral of the transformer whereas in TT there is no metallic fault return path as a result uh, please look at uh, very carefully the protective device where I am making the cursor OCPD plus RCD type B RCD 30 milliampere. In uh, the previous case, in case of a TNCS system, of course, OCPD is enough for the safety, basic safety, whereas if you go for a TT system, TT system, the difference is three phase and neutral comes from the electricity supply company. In the consumer premise, the earthing is created, which is the uh, let us say electrically separated from the source here thing now most important point is in order to disconnect the supply during a fault condition you are supposed to use a 30 milliampere rcd and uh, since uh, your you your system is also connected to the dc side dc leakages are also often dangerous and the standard says you should use a type b rcd Actually, type B is recommended if there is no simple separation. This we will discuss later. But as a safety measure, type B is necessary. But unfortunately, sometimes type B RCCBs are not available in the market. The equipment manufacturers, such as the PCE power conversion equipment manufacturer, he is making his own earthing arrangement inside his uh, cabinet, including protective earthing, protective bonding, and so on say for example in this particular picture you have uh, an earth they have an earth terminal or an earth bus bar number three is the incoming pe conductor this incoming pe conductor is coming from the main distribution board or the main earth bus bar of your installation 
then internally you see here the uh, the uh, earthings are made so the manufacturer take already taken care of his earthing provided the earth bus bar of the, the or the earth terminal of the power conversion equipment must be connected to the incoming earth bus bar this incoming earth bus bar or earth wire is the wire which is coming along with the earth wire which is coming along with the phase and the neutral of the incoming power supply so basically inverter as the earth pit is not required you are supposed to connect to the incoming earth wire protection against electric shock as you know every electrical installation protection against electric shock there are four protective measures required first is protection against electric shock second is protection against the thermal effect third is protection against overcurrent and overload or overload overcurrent protection the fourth one is over voltage protection with respect to electric shock very important to understand that the protective measure fault protection by protective equipotential bonding and automatic disconnection of supply is not practical the recommended method is double or reinforced insulation this means equipment such as pv modules junction boxes or cabinets cables used on the dc side up to the dc terminal of the pv inverter shall be class 2 or equivalent insulation i am sure all of you knows about the class 2 or uh, reinforced or double insulation because we are discussing about uh, reinforced or double insulation in several of our webinars so you know very well on the dc side in order to have uh, uh, fault protection or shock protection or protection against shock so double insulated electrical installation is recommended in the standard the second recommendation is the extra low voltage provided by SELV or PELV where you know the by by limiting the voltage lesser than 125 20 volt DC that means up to 120 volt DC you can go for uh, uh, SELV PELV requirement extra low voltage because there is no shock hazard also basic protection is not required if the nominal voltage is lesser than uh, 35 volt but uh, of course most of the time the dc side operating voltage is much higher than 120 volt so the effective shock protective measure is double or reinforced insulation double insulation for example the pv junction box is plastic the wire which is the wire is having an insulation and uh, once when you connect it to a terminal of course the enclosure is also plastic double insulated uh, material this also means using metallic enclosures for uh, uh, the the pv side uh, let us say for example a combiner box the metallic uh, enclosures will often uh, uh, you know it's a violation of uh, the requirement of uh, class 2 electrical insulation double insulation will be compromised if you use uh, say for example a metallic uh, electrical or panel a combiner panel so the, uh, the the recommendation in the standard is equipment such as PV module, junction boxes, cabinets, cables used in the DC side up to DC terminal of the PV side shall be class 2 or equivalent insulation. Now, please note that this class 2 means double insulation. Double insulated wires are recommended as a safety measure against parallel arcing as well. So, this double insulation also gives safety against uh, uh, parallel arcing. I'm sure in a lot of places, especially in rooftop uh, solar installation, uh, due to cost pressure, uh, the double insulated installation are not very much followed. So I rec my recommendation is uh, please note that this is the only shock protective measure available. So you cannot or you must not uh, violate uh, the double insulation requirements on the DC side of the uh, solar PV if the voltage is more than 120 volt DC. Example, how to make uh, a double insulated wire or if you use a, a single, a normal wire, how can you achieve uh, double insulation? These are also explained in the standard. And the first step, you please read that. Class 5 conductor, I'm sure we are always discussing about class 5 and class 2 conductor. Class 2 conductor means a copper wire which is having a lesser resistance. Class 5 conductor is a copper wire with a higher resistance. So class 5 conductor is allowed only in places which is subject to movement. 
in all the fixed part of the installation, class two conductor shall be used. So class two conductor has got a little bit lesser resistance, about eight percentage lesser resistance. Then of course the cost is also higher because class two conductor lesser resistance means more copper, more copper means more cost. The wires uh, must have a double insulation. Say for example here, the inner core, the inner conductor. First, it has got an insulation. Then there is a non-metallic sheath, non-metallic sheath. So this is a method to achieve double insulation. The idea is, even if one insulation is broken, there is one more insulation to protect against electric shock. So these are double insulated wires, uh, two type of wires which can be, or which is recommended in the standard, you can see in the picture. If you use the normal copper uh, wire with uh, you know the normal wire which is available, you should use it uh, inside uh, PVC or plastic conduit. The insulated conduits are required. So in this uh, situation where I am moving the cursor, the wire is having an insulation which is installed inside a PVC conduit. So you have two insulation, double insulation requirement is achieved. If you are putting it in a conduit, of course you should put it inside a insulated trunk this also means on the dc side if you use a metallic cable trunking normal wire cannot be put on the metallic cable trunking it should be insulated trunking if you are using metallic trunking the wires must be double insulated you see here a metallic conduit and inside the metallic conduit the wires are double insulated so all these wires are double insulated, another metallic trunking with the double insulated wire. So this means a normal wire inside metallic trunking is a violation of the rule for class two installation or violation, so you cannot do it. So different kind of uh, achieving uh, double insulation methods are explained in the standard. You, I request uh, you please go through the standard uh, understand it and try to implement them. So these measures, double insulation, so far what I was explaining, these are the measures which has to be implemented in order to avoid a shock hazard, shock for human being. More than shock hazard, another dangerous problem in the solar PV is thermal effect, fire. Thermal effects are classified into the protective measures are classified into you know the protection against uh, effect of insulation fault, overcurrent protection, appropriate rating of components, and signage to alert emergency service workers. These are the rec recommended uh, protective measures against uh, thermal effect. Uh, number one, protection against the effect of insulation fault. That means in case of any insulation fault, you do something so that uh, the solar PV is not catching fire. Number two, overcurrent protection. Of course, you must understand that the overcurrent protective devices are not very efficient, but uh, special fuses are available, which is even uh, able to disconnect at a, at a current which is little bit higher than its nominal current. But please understand that it takes a lot of time. That means the electrical installation, the wiring and the accessories must be able to withstand that particular time. Very important. Appropriate rating of the components are uh, very much mandatory because if you derate, uh, this also lead to uh, uh, fire. But the derating, please understand that uh, in an exposed area, not only the sizing of the conductor, several other influencing factors such as sunlight, uh, ultraviolet, chemical, mechanical, all those points must be taken care. The last protective measure is uh, you alert somebody so that you can manually do something to stop uh, uh, further of a fire. Please remember that loose connections in uh, DC is really dangerous. Now we go to the complicated part of the presentation. Especially today we are going to discuss only about the protection against the effect of insulation fault. How to create an insulation fault in a solar PV, especially on the DC side. First, you should understand the type of uh, insulation failure and the type of uh, arc in PV system. 
in the picture you can see there are three type of arcs the first one is the series means there is a loose contact in a terminal and uh, there is a series arc uh, say for example these two series arc arc to earth uh, means there is an insulation failure and the wire is touching some metallic part that means the the double insulation itself has broken and uh, the the uh, 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 insulating the the wire is in the conductive part is in touch with the uh, exposed or extraneous conductive part as a result the series arc is happening uh, sorry arc uh, to earth is happening there are two chances one is arc from the wiring next one is arc uh, within the pv module then parallel arc parallel arc is the arc uh, between two dc wires like uh, the positive and negative wires but uh, please note that uh, against the parallel arc the uh, double insulation is providing certain amount of protection because double insulation means uh, even if one insulation goes off so there is one more insulation to protect uh, the people i will just show you what is written in the standard about this particular subject very interesting to read i am just showing you the standard uh, 60 this is an indian standard let me show you is 16997 or 60364 i go to the annexure just to show you about the dangers of arc which is as i said most important because the fire in solar is a big headache at the moment in the country an extra informative arc fault detection and interruption of pv arrays unlike traditional electrical products the pv modules and wi on and wiring do not have any an overall enclosure to contain arc and fires resulting from components of wiring fault many pv installations operate at dc voltage which are very capable of sustaining dc arc there are three main categories of arc in pv installation series arc which may result from a faulty connection or a series break in the wiring a parallel arc which may result uh, as a partial short circuit between adjacent wiring which is a different potential arc to earth which result from failure of insulation now further if we go if an arc develops due to fault in pv array this can result in significant damage to the array and may also result in damage to adjacent wiring and building structure the most serious arc is likely to be parallel arc because of the energy that is available to feed this type of arc especially when the arc is between the main pv array conductor so as i said uh, against parallel arc uh, of course uh, double insulation is the most important safety measure but uh, uh, most of the time inside the combiner boxes uh, the double insulation requirements are compromised this is one of the reason a combiner box if you look at uh, if you look in the google you can find out uh, several videos where the combiner boxes are burning it never stops and it keep on burning because the solar the pv module is pumping energy into the uh, the the combiner box double insulation is compromised as a result it catches fire so this document requires cable in pv array you see you read here i am just uh, 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 highlighting this document require cable and pv array wiring to be suitable to be used with class 2 equipment and because of this requirement parallel arcs are very unlikely if you read it in another way if you use class 2 wiring or class 2 equipment uh, the uh, the parallel arc likely that means if you compromise it uh, they are likely unless cause as a result of significant insulation damage due to fire damage and severe mechanical damage to uh, uh, cables the most likely type of arc to occur in a pv installation is a series arc this is because pv installation typically contain a very large number of series connection so now i hope uh, you understood the seriousness of the subject this is i am just showing the standard just to uh, uh, inform you that uh, the situation in dc is not like uh, an ac side uh, we have to apply separate or special protective measures now for example series arc uh, in a dc system, ac system we have the arc flash detection device afdd which is recommended for example in bedrooms wiring in bedrooms wiring in explosive areas and so on whereas that kind of a device is not available for 
AC uh, DC application. So, for example, here what the standard says a new standard has been developed by Underwriters Laboratory UL 1699B photovoltaic DC arc fault protection device. But unfortunately, there is no product uh, available in the market until now. Now, with this uh, background, let me go back to my presentation. For the purpose of uh, uh, finding out uh, the fault and disconnecting the fault, several methods are incorporated. Several methods are implemented or written, recommended in the standard. This part of the standard actually is highly confusing. Basically, there are three types of categories, non-separated PVRI system, non-separated means the DC side and the AC side are not electrically separated. So electrical separation is possible either by a transformer or nowadays electrical separation is possible by the semiconductor devices. So basically, non-separated PVRI means the DC side and the AC side does not have any electrical separation. <coughs> Functionally earthed PVRI. Third one is non-earthed PVRI system. These three categories are made and the fault protective measure against fire thermal effect has to be implemented based on the recommended measure for a typical application. One of the Example, functionally earthed PV system. Functionally earthed PV system in the sense, I start from the left side. You have the AC mains. You have the AC mains may be earthed or unearthed. External transformer, you have the PCE. That means just before the PCE, power conversion, or just before the inverter, you have a transformer which is electrically isolating the AC mains and the PV installation, including the inverter. Now the PV module, including the inverter, which is at the secondary side of the external transformer, is functionally earthed. You see here, this one, functionally earthed. Functionally earthed means uh, this earthing has got certain purpose. Number one, this earthing will create a stable voltage on that particular line from the secondary side of the transformer up to the last PV module. The voltage is stable and very important the functional earthing is always made with a kind of a device for example at this circuit pvri functional earthing there can be a fuse there can be a, a, a protective device there can be a relay there can be some kind of a switching device or there can be an impedance the idea is in case of uh, let me draw it to one moment Okay, in case, imagine in case of a fault here on the DC side, the fault current is returning back to the source through this functional earthing terminal. Let us say this, this, this functional earthing, imagine there is a, a one amp fuse. So there is a functional earthing and there is a protective device in that particular circuit. Once when the current is more than certain limit, this current can be disconnected. This device will disconnect uh, the functional earthing. Number one, all of you, the user and the PCE and the electronics know that the functional earthing has been disconnected because there is a fault somewhere in the DC side. Since the functional earthing is disconnected, there is no fault current flow. As a result, your system is still in. So as I said, the methods implemented in DC is a little bit different than in, or the method implemented in a solar PV is a little bit different than what we generally do for AC application. So we have to be very careful. This one is a, a functionally earthed PV system with the internal separation. That means the PCE is having a transformer inside the electrical isolation internal happening within the power conversion equipment. Here also. Uh, you can see the functionally earthed system. This one is uh, a non-separated uh, DC system, but uh, again functionally earthed. Functionally earthed, as I said, the purpose of the functional earthing is 
whenever there is a fault in this particular circuit the fault current will return back through this functionally earthed wire and on that wire there is a measurement mechanism and there is a disconnection mechanism provided with the help of maybe a fuse or with the help of an ocpd or relay or contactor or whatever it is there is a mechanism available in this route as a result whenever the current is more than certain limit the functional earthing is disconnected once when the functional earthing is disconnected say for example this functional earthing is disconnected under that condition your entire system is floating the single fault you know in a, in a in a floating system single fault do not create a hazard so that is the technique which is applied in a functionally earthed system the second type of system is non earth referenced pv system non earth referenced pv system means it's completely floating you need to have a insulation monitoring device and there are certain insulation levels uh, applied if the insulation level is lesser than uh, the limit recommended limit uh, it's very easy you can find out uh, and you can take the necessary step so the second one non earth reference the pv system again non earth reference the pv system say for example uh, uh, here you have a pce with an external transformer the same circuit pce with an internal uh, transformer is possible the non separated system with the inverter where non separated you see the the, the inverter doesn't have any electrical separation between ac and uh, dc say for example in this particular case you please try to understand the circuit so there is an ac mains the ac mains the neutral is earthed now the pce doesn't have any electrical separation that means electrically the pv module and the ac side is connected imagine there is an earth fault in the PC, pv side the fault current will return back to the system through the neutral earthing the safety measure recommended is if there is a current measurement or if you find that uh, say for example on the pv side the insulation resistance is lesser than certain limit what you should do is you should disconnect the ac supply in order to have safety from an earth fault or from a fault at the dc side of the pvra we have to disconnect the ac side in this particular case because by disconnecting the ac supply the return path is disconnected as a result the chance of fire has been minimized this system also with the dc dc converter the same method so you have a non separated dc dc inverter and in case of fault you are supposed to disconnect the incoming supply so basically what i wanted to tell you is there are different combinations available and these combinations are mainly decided by the inverter manufacturer the inverter manufacturer will tell you what kind of system you are supposed to follow one of the problem which i have seen is the inverter manufacturer is recommending let's say for example x topology but uh, without understanding the topology a y topology is made in the installation this is a hazard we are not supposed to do it we should really understand what the inverter manufacturer thought for this particular safety measure and we have to implement the correct safety measure now to implement this correct uh, measure the designer of the solar pv system he has to carefully analyze and he has to understand the different topologies which is applied along with the necessary protective measure say for example this is a an unearthed system pv dc configuration arrangement of an unearthed system unearthed what is unearthed this side the dc side is unearthed the dc side is unearthed the positive and negative is completely double insulated it is connected to the pce without a transformer inside and the pce is connected to the uh, incoming power supply the phase and the neutral power supply now in under this condition 
technically the dc side is electrically connected to the incoming because of the neutral earthing of the incoming transformer of the supply transformer it can be a supply transformer from the utility company unearthed pv array connected to the ac side via a pc without a transformer non isolated inverter earthed line of ac main is the reference of at the dc side earthed line of ac main is the reference at the dc side the first safety measure what you should understand is never try to earth this neutral never connect this neutral to earth which is often i have seen in several places the neutral which is coming from or the neutral terminal of the inverter is connected to earth which is a big big violation of the uh, safety measure please don't do it the neutral under this condition is completely isolated one moment let me erase yeah so here what you are seeing in the picture is a pvdc you have the inverter which is which doesn't have electrical isolation so the pv side is referenced to the neutral of the incoming supply or to one of the phase of the incoming supply if it is a three phase in single phase inverters in lot of places the neutral of the inverter is connected to earth i have even seen one of the utilities recommendation they say that the neutral of the inverter shall be connected to two earth pits which is wrong please don't do it here the safety measure is in case of any fault at the dc side the incoming supply will be isolated and this feature must be inbuilt in the pce if the pce particular feature of course your solar pv will be in trouble it can catch fire now in a non isolated inverter an array grounded fault will result in potentially hazard current flow during operation due to the earth neutral of the mains so inverter must not connect to the mains another condition pvdc arrangement of earthing system now in this particular case this is a pce with the transformer inside that means the inverter with an isolation with an uh, isolation transformer inside that means the ac side and dc side are electrically isolated under this condition you see here the negative in the picture the negative is functionally earthed i am sure you are aware of this functional earthing symbol 5018 functional earthing is made for certain application it is not for safety it is not a fault return path it has to do something for the functioning of the whole system that is how it is in an isolated inverter if the first ground flow fault in a floating or functional ground array goes undetected a second fault can cause a hazardous current to flow the first fault as a, as a result you know first fault may not be dangerous but second fault may be very much dangerous so the safety measure which has to be implemented is the first fault itself must be it must be detected and avoided so the detection of detection and indication of the first fault is required but the inverter is allowed to connect and the commence operation because of the isolation of the inverter means the earth neutral of the mains will not provide a return current for the earth fault so to simply understand i will explain it in a normal language imagine you have a three phase inverter with a transformer and this particular connection where i am highlighting that means the functional earthing is already made inside the pc the inverter manufacturer has taken care of it he has already made the connection inside it means the entire dc side electrical installation must be double insulated you are not supposed to earth neither positive or negative because that is already taken care by the inverter manufacturer if the inverter manufacturer is not taking care of it he must be writing it in his manual and then if he has written it in your in his manual then it is the job of the installer to take appropriate measure now whether the pce manufacturer 
make this facility inside the inverter is a big question because uh, nowadays for solar pv we go day by day we try to reduce the cost uh, you have to be sure that if you try to reduce the cost of uh, the inverter or the pce then of course such safety measures also will be extra they will simply remove it and they will put it in the manual so the installer have to read it understand it and they have to uh, put it uh, in the system now how the system works it's very simple all of you know that on your system it system the first fault is not going to create a safety hazard now imagine in this particular case uh, let me see the rating of the fuse which has to be implemented here say for example this one a rated current of automatic dis disconnection device in the functional earthing conductor that means the wire the functional earthing wire is having a fuse here you have the fuse and the fuse rating is based on the pv array pv array kilowatt hour kwp for example 0 to 25 kilowatt the fuse is 1 amps uh, 100 to 250 kilowatt it is 4 amps more than 250 kilowatt 5 amps 25 to 50 it is 2 amps basically this kind of a, a fuse is implemented in this location now whenever there is a fault on the pv array between the pv array or between uh, the lines uh, to expose the extraneous conductive part we have to ensure that the earthing arrangement is made in such a way that the fault current is returning back to the source through this path this path means through that particular fuse let's say one ampere fuse up to one ampere this means up to 25 kilowatt solar pv a fault current of one amp is less than one amp is not hazardous more than one amp is hazardous one amp fuse you must understand that the fuse has got a certain disconnecting uh, uh, principle or a disconnecting method say for example 1.45 times the rated current will take up to one hour that means 1.45 amps uh, over current uh, will take uh, the, the fuse or the MCB will take almost uh, one hour to disconnect. So all these calculations are already made. Simply the installer must ensure that in case of any fault in the DC side of the system, the fault current must return back to the system through this particular functional thing. And if the current is more than the uh, required or the uh, 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 current then the fuse disconnects now once when the fuse disconnects let me draw it again once when the fuse disconnects let us say this is not existing once when the fuse disconnects uh, the functional air thing then what happens is the dc side is completely in a floating way it is like an it system unearthed system Unearthed system with a single fault, say for example, the, there is a fault, unearthed system with a single fault, which is not hazardous, there is no fault current as a result. You have detected that uh, there is a fault and you know that uh, the system is still safe. So before the fault, the second fault comes, you should take care of the installation. That is how it is. So now, if uh, you use a combination one transformer with uh, so many inverters sometimes people use uh, they buy inverters without transformer and sometimes five inverters are connected to one isolation transformer you should also look into these requirements there shall be no other equipment connected to the same winding of the external transformer as the pc that means you have a dedicated transformer for each pc and you shall not connect the secondary winding of the transformer to a load other than PC. And if you use it where the system is rated only for use in closed electrical operating areas, other equipment is allowed to be connected to the same winding of the PC output as other PCs, if specially rated for connecting to a common winding. Now, where this is applicable? Let me take the picture. Say, for example, this picture. This picture, you have a isolation transformer for your solar PV. 
Now the standard recommends uh, this isolation transformer must be exclusive to this particular PC. You have to use it exclusive. If you wanted to use the same isolation transformer for multiple PCs, uh, then that PCE should have some extra safety measures. So you have to check with the PCE manufacturer's catalog and uh, find out whether it is allowed to connect uh, a PCE without internal separation is allowed to connect to common transformer. You have to be careful in that particular case. I'm sure most of you are already doing it. Let me, one moment, yeah, put that here. So this is how the earth fault protection is achieved. Please note that earth fault protection, what we are talking is not against protection from electric shock, but it is against protection from fire. Protection from electric shock is achieved only by double insulation of the DC side. Now protection against the thermal effect. See, different kind of systems, you can find this kind of a table in the, uh, the respective standard, in almost all the solar PV standards. You can see these configurations, non-separated, functionally earthed, non-reference earthed, and uh, you can see here, plus the necessary safety measures are also included in the standard. Say, for example, PVRA to earth insulation resistance monitoring. So two safety measures which is included is one is insulation resistance monitoring. That means the PVRA, depending upon its capacity, should have certain minimum insulation resistance. So say for example, up to 20 kilowatt, 30 uh, kilo ohm insulation resistance, and more than 500 kilowatt, one meg ohm, one kilo ohm insulation resistance is uh, required. So the insulation resistance of the system is measured and uh, by measuring the insulation resistance, if the insulation indication of the earth fault, see here what safety measure, stop and disconnect all poles of PV array from earth -to load side of the system. So on the earth -to side of the load, uh, earth -to side, either you can disconnect the earthing or you can disconnect the load or you can disconnect uh, a part of uh, the uh, PV, which is three, which has created uh, the fault, provided you have a monitoring system for each and every uh, circuit. So that part of the circuit, either you can disconnect or you can disconnect the functional earthing. As a result, the safety is achieved. This is one method: insulation resistance monitoring. The next method is uh, residual current monitoring. Residual current monitoring is uh, the Current which is flowing through the functional earthing system is uh, monitored and uh, uh, the, it, the, the functional earthing is disconnected in order to achieve safety. So these are some of the techniques which is used for fire protection in solar PV. If you use the functional earthing, you should also note down, for example, for functional reason, some PV module technologies require a live part to be connected to earth. So not only the PV module, not only the inverter, the compatibility of inverter and the PV module must be made in common. Second, functional earthing of live part of DC side of a piece permitted if there is at least a simple separation AC side and the DC side by means of a transformer having Electrical separation. So functional earthing is possible only if you have an electrical separation, whether internal or outside. Uh, if you doesn't have a electrical separation, I'm sure most of the time nowadays uh, the market is using uh, PCE without uh, electrical separation because without electrical separation is cheaper. So uh, we have to adopt uh, some additional safety measures. So all these conditions has to be fulfilled in order to have a safe system. As I said, the, through the functional earthing, depending upon the capacity of the, the installed PV uh, uh, array or PV, you know, the, the capacity, you are supposed to measure the current and you are supposed to disconnect. Similarly, impulse voltage, safety against uh, over voltage, each, part of the electrical installation of the PV must withstand certain 
impulse voltage withstand. Of course, in the PV module, these impulse voltages are ensured by the PV module manufacturer, depending upon its voltage. But at some point, at some point, the PCE, you have to be very careful. If you are buying a, a PCE, which is not tested as per the standard, you have to be careful and you have to buy, you have to ensure that uh, the PCE is uh, rated for this or tested for this particular parameter. What I uh, have seen is uh, most of the inverters, which is uh, 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 sold or used in India, or sometimes this parameter is uh, not tested. The danger is uh, it can fail any time and it can catch fire. So you have to be, you have to use an inverter, which is electrically or which is tested for all these parameters. Now, here thing, one of the picture, uh, you can see here the the, the uh, shielded uh, wire is coming. The shielding is connected to the combiner box. Uh, the combiner box uh, here you see the uh, there is a small bus bar made, and uh, the protective conductor is connected to the inverter, and the protective conductor goes towards the AC incoming. This is nothing but in case of uh, a TNCS system, it goes to the neutral of the transformer. In case of HET, it goes to the earth electrode. So this is how earthing has to be made. Of course, uh, as I said, uh, the uh, separate earthing of DC, separate earthing of uh, neutral of the inverter, all these are illegal. Please don't do it. One of the subjects which you should always keep in mind is an, a, an indirect current, probably a lightning current, uh, or any current which is having a larger uh, di by dt that means uh, the rate of change of current is high may induce uh, voltages into the module into the array and this may damage the insulation of your pv modules or pv array we have to be very careful probably the lightning is one kilometer away but that lightning can induce uh, voltage into your system if the system wiring is not carried out properly. For example, here, there are two types of wiring shown. You see here, in the first case, from the combiner box, the positive is coming, it is looped to each and every module, then it is coming back like this. In the second case, so it is looped and you see here, the wiring is made in such a way that the loop is reduced to a small, to a very less extent. So in this condition, if there is a lightning strike, voltage is created in the combiner box. And in the first case, due to the large loop, a high voltage is created in the combiner box, which may result in the failure of the PV system. Whereas in the second case, the loop is reduced to a, la a very low level. As a result, the induced voltage is very much less. So basically, the wiring which you are doing on the DC side, you should ensure that uh, the uh, positive and negative wires are routed in such a way that the loop is reduced to a very low level. And here you can see this recommendation in the standard. Uh, each module, you see, the positive and negative should run parallelly. The return conductor also should run very close, in close proximity. Both these wires should run in close proximity. Very important. Otherwise, it may uh, lead to failure. So now, coming to lightning protection, of course, uh, the recommended method is uh, in the standard. Uh, you have to have a mesh, you have to have uh, individual rods, and you can apply the techniques such as the rolling sphere in the uh, uh, air termination so that uh, lightning is not striking the, uh, the building or the, the PV directly. Two techniques which is applied is, uh, the one is electrical separation. Electrical separation means the lightning protection system is away from the solar PV module. It is away, that means the solar PV, there is no arc over or flash over from the lightning protection system due to a lightning or at the time of lightning to the PV because the distance, the separation distance is calculated and maintained here, the separation distance. The rod is away from the PV module. The conductor is away from the PV module. This is one technique. Let me skip uh, this particular part. 
lightning protection and surge protection shall be uh, you should not uh, uh, make lightning protection a separate idea and surge protection a separate idea no both has to be combined in such a way that uh, depending upon the type of lightning protection let me show it you should select the uh, wiring the size of the wiring has to be made in size of the wiring and the type of spd shall be selected based on whether you have an external lightning protection system or not. For example, if there is no external lightning protection system, the equipotential bonding wire shall be six square millimeters and the location one, two, and three, four. One, two, and three, four is, see here, this is location one. Location one means AC side, location two means between the kilowatt hour meter and the inverter, location three means at the DC side. So, if you have no external lightning protection, all the locations you can go for type 2 SPD. If you go for uh, with external lightning protection, separation distance is maintained, then type 1 SPD is required at the main incoming type 2 for the other location. Uh, and uh, if the lightning protection is uh, with the, the building is with external lightning protection, separation distance is not maintained, which is generally in all the cases we do this one. No separation distance is maintained. The lightning protection air termination and the frame of the solar PV are often connected or it is running very close by without calculating the separation distance. Under that condition, the minimum equipotential bonding conductor must be 16 square millimeters and you should use the type 1 SPD in all the locations. It is not a type 2 SPD, it is type 1 SPD. So you have to be careful in this particular case. Now, I, my presentation is so long. Now let me find out uh, some additional information which I can give. One information which I wanted to uh, provide is, one moment, by mistake I unshared the, one information which I wanted to share to you is uh, the, uh, the earthing of uh, a large PV installation. You can see here, ground mounted system so here you have the control room you have the main earthing bus bar you have uh, finally the earthing is made as a grid interconnecting every frame of the solar pv the grid size uh, can be based on the recommendation from the standard for example this one is uh, from the standard uh, IECTS 62738, uh, the standard says uh, at least at every 20 meter you are supposed to have an interconnection. That means you are supposed to make a grid of, let's say, for example, 40 meter and uh, at least at 20 meter you are supposed to have a connection. But uh, this connection, the size of the grid shall be made based on the soil resistivity. You have to analyze the soil resistivity and there are certain calculations and then you have to find out the size of the grid and the uh, the frequency of interconnection must be made. So basically the whole solar PV, we are not talking about uh, uh, the, the earth electrode, vertical earth electrodes. So by this, uh, I would like to stop uh, the presentation of today. You can find out, sorry, there is a small mistake in my mobile number. Say for example, my number is double nine six two five triple two double four. So in somewhere I copied a wrong number and a lot of people are calling on the wrong number. So by this, I would like to stop uh, the presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, maybe we can have a small question answer. Over to you, Mr. Dungi. Yeah.